To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. Well, with You know, with all the crazy things going on in the world, having a purpose-driven business strategy that is grounded in conscious leadership and mindfulness, I think it's critically important as uh, as the world kind of goes in in a tailspin and businesses are trying to figure out how to respond uh, to, to these unparalleled times. I think that being really sure about who you are, why you exist, what is your purpose, what is the value that you bring to other people, and how can you do that consistently and consciously? I think all of these things are, are really apropos for the season that we are in, so I'm really delighted to welcome Laura Juarez to the show. She is a business consultant, a strategist, an experienced board chair, mother, and yogi. Her consulting company Pure Potential helps leaders and companies create impact-driven strategies and embody conscious leadership. She is the host of the Conscious Leadership Podcast and author of the book, Ignite Your Impact. Laura, welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. Oh, thank you so much, Ralph. I'm excited to be here with you. It was a lovely introduction, so I appreciate that. Thank you so much for taking some time to to share with us your wisdom regarding um, creating purpose in our life and in our business. All of this is, is really, I think, uh, so appropriate and conscious leadership, mindfulness, all the the uh, the ways and the means, the methods that we take the vision and make it a reality. So I love that. And as a strategist, I'm really interested in in your approach to things. First, tell us, uh, how did you get started in uh, this particular area of business consulting? What's your story? Sure. So I started my career in corporate consulting, working for what is now Accenture doing organizational design and development work. And then as I transitioned from there, I ended up as the CEO and owner of a B2B manufacturing company that serviced the Midwest. And so through that process, somewhere along the way, I had children and I was just really doing what I think so many of us do, which is work a thousand hours raising kids, trying to do all of the things right, cross all the T's, dot the I's. And my body just literally started to quit. So I had a pretty significant health crisis as a result of this high charge lifestyle that I was attempting to live. And it was a real pivot point for me to realize, oh, wait, there has got to be a better way because work is very meaningful to me. I take Um, great pleasure in work. I actually joke that it's like a source of recreation for me. Mm. Um, And that it should be part of our own evolution. It should be part of our growth as human being and contributor to the world. And so how is it that we use our work to not just create an impact through the business product and service, but also that it becomes a vehicle through which all of us, right, ourselves as owners, stakeholders, are elevating in our own life, that we're becoming more conscious governors and leaders of our own existence. I really love that, especially, I think, uh, alluding to all the things going on in the world. It's a great Mm -hmm. time to really take a step back and ask yourself, why am I here and what am I doing? Mm -hmm. This is the perfect time. Yeah. And and so this is really part of the rebelpreneur mindset is, is how do we build the business we need that's going to give us the life that we want. And I always quote from Michael Gerber, who says that it if you don't design your business in a way that gives you more life, it will take the life that you've got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, yes. ex- that's exactly <laughs> what, what you're describing there. So what yes. was what was the turning point for you? How, how did you 
but you, you came to that realization, but what, what was the catalyst for uh, th- this eureka moment and then making these massive shifts in your life? Sure, sure. So, you know, I, I, I'm a huge believer and hoper perhaps that others can find that awareness without having a medical crash, right? Like that's what it Mm. took for me, which is, um, not atypical in my life. I sometimes need the two by four and (laughs) that is also an indication of where we are. So I think that when we need those big, bold messages, or when we feel like we don't have enough time or the stars aren't aligned, right? Those are ways in which we live below the line and what is a better story that can lead our life. And so as I would was going through that process and peeling back, well, what is most important to me? What does significance look like? How does it feel in my body? I realized that I had made a lot of amazing choices that looked fabulous on paper. I loved what I did, but it wasn't really what I felt called to do in from the kind of the perspective of what my gifts and genius were. Mm. And so I, I started to play with this idea of who am I in my essence? And this is something that I take leaders through in the conscious leadership aspect of what I do to say, who are you at your core? And then how do we use that information of the being of who you are to help to direct the doing of what you choose? So it is the being of you that is giving the guidance to the actions that you choose. And when we do that, we just feel more aligned. We just feel more truthful in our existence. And it's just an easier place to be, right? There's just more flow there. And, and I tell you what, if, if you don't have that deep connection to purpose and significance and a real depth of who you are, who you're being, and, and then that flows out of what you're doing, uh, you're really going to be rattled and, and you're, you're not going to be consistent. You're not going to perform at your highest level and, and work is going to feel like work instead of feeling like play, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then if we can apply that to a business, right? A business is an organism as well. And so it has a heartbeat. It has a soul. And what is its intention? What is its purpose? And then how do we align all of the actions of all of our stakeholders around it? And I really think that's what strategy is. And so if we can get out of this kind of classical lens of strategy as an annual process by which we set milestones and goals around who do we want to be when we grow up and really get clear on how is how is the essence of this business, the impact it wants to have, the impact it's created to have, because that's how businesses get started. Someone had a dream. And how do we keep that alive in the everyday actions? And sometimes in really difficult times right now, like for example, right now where businesses are closed down and really struggling with how do we how do we navigate this? Yeah, it's a great time to really, um, um, really hit the pause button and and dig deep and and see yes. who so, you know gut check I guess is what they say and um, figure out who are we where are we going what and what is the strategy how are we how are we going to navigate and get from where we are to, to where we want to be and and then from my perspective as strategic communications. Um, how do we need to master our message more effectively to respond to what's going on? All of these things are are just really fascinating uh, if you can get past the initial um, uh, discomfort that comes when when things begin to change and you don't feel like you're in control. But actually, you do have control over much more than you realize. Oh, yes, absolutely. And I think in a time like this, if you are running a company or part of a team where there's a number of people involved, there are a lot of moving pieces right now. Everybody is busy trying to figure out how are we going to manage the production? How do we manage supply chain? How do we manage vendor relationships, payments, banking relationships, shortage of cash? I mean, there's like there, there's a lot of blocking and tackling that can happen. And so it becomes difficult to step out of that and stay focused on strategy. But this is exactly when we need to do that because the reality is, is that the strategy that we put in place for most of us, probably for the year 2020, 
everything changed. So your starting point is completely different than where it was a month ago. And so how, I, what, it, what does that do to how it is you're leading your organization? And they're, they're tough, hard questions right now, but they're really important. Absolutely. And, and you can't wait for the annual retreat to address these issues, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> especially yeah. if you just had one, you know, a couple of months ago. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. And right now, probably every company should be allocating some amount of time, whether it's 15% to 30% is, I think, kind of the sweet spot of working on the business, but trying to find a way to work on, first of all, a steady state strategy. So what's that short term corrective action that's going to help us get back to where we feel like our heads above water. And then from that point, we can really think about growth trajectory and how do we propel in a way that is, um, that, that, that shifts the business and shifts the market and allows us to bring something new and innovative. But right now there's a little bit of just figuring out how do I achieve steady state? Yeah. Yeah. How, I mean, what is the new normal and, and mm-hmm. how do we get to it? <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Any port in a storm and then you can you can uh, pull out your charts and, and figure out where to go from there. Yes. Um, yes. So in, in terms of conscious leadership, what, what does conscious mm-hmm. leadership mean to you and how do we get there? Hmm, I love this because I've been a student of leadership forever. And I mean, I think I've read everything under the sun. And it wasn't until I went through my personal health crisis and I found yoga and mindfulness as practices and a couple little entrepreneurial projects that I've had along the way. I call them kind of more of my passion projects. Um, I, I've opened a couple of yoga studios and I'm a senior teacher as well because I feel so um, so strongly about the potential of this practice in people's life. But I started to think about how we, in spiritual realms of our life, we think about this idea of consciousness. What is that to be connected to something bigger? What is it to be aligned with higher purpose or even aligned or having a bias for good? And, and where does that live in our businesses and where does that live in us as leaders of, because our, our leadership capability or our leadership spheres are a real platform that we have to create change and to create elevate elevation beyond just ourselves. So conscious leadership to me is a choice to stay above the line, to stay in a place of curiosity as a way to explore and to experiment, to play with ways in which we catch ourselves playing in stress, playing in anxiety, playing in fear, playing in anger, however that shows up for us. And then to make that transition and to create a a culture where inquiry and above the line play is the norm, right? Like that's that, that is celebrated and rewarded. And to me, that's what conscious leadership is. It's just really, um, seeing possibility, not needing to know answers, not needing ego to be a lead. I don't need to know everything to drive an organization. I need to know the right questions to ask, and I need to be able to hold space for people to be their best. And that, that's, that's in some situations much harder than in others. Like right Mm -hmm. now it's hard to stay in that, right? Like you just want to go in like a laser and take care of things, but just how do you preserve culture and what are all of the different ways that we think about success in our business? So I, I call this like, what are your currencies? So there's obviously profit. But what are the other currencies that you have value for as an organization and how do you keep the spotlight on all of them? Mm, Very, very fascinating. So I I always ask people, uh, what's the biggest problem uh, you see with the people that you're trying to help? And, uh, you know, with everything going on, it would be real easy. And and the temptation is to look outside of yourself, to look at Mm -hmm. external things and say, well, that out there is my Mm -hmm. biggest problem. What is the biggest challenge internally in in these cultures, in these leaders that you consistently find, regardless of what's going on in in the economy or or in the ups and downs of of the world, but what's the biggest challenge inwardly and as a culture that we have to to really address to to get to this place of mindfulness and uh, uh, strategic leadership? 
Mm, yeah, I love that question, Ralph. Um, I think the answer is the same for individuals and for organizations. And that is that we lack a consistent, disciplined process to keep ourselves and our businesses above the line. So I really believe that because we're human and thus we have a bias towards the negative, it's just the way the brain works, um, we need to have a process that we're leading in our own life with very regular touch points that look not just at, did I meet the goal, but who was I in the midst of meeting the goal? And am I optimizing myself and my capability? And then the same thing with the organization. What is that ongoing set of questions that you're asking yourself through your teams or through all of your stakeholders around who are we as a business? Who are we called to be in this moment, right? Like in the middle of this pandemic, as we speak, who are we called to be? And we're going to do all the actions. We're going to go through it. There's no dodging this. And so we get to make these conscious choices around how we go through it. And if we don't have those systematic processes and real discipline to hold ourselves accountable to them, we'll just have this propensity for regression, both individually and organizationally. Mm, it, that makes a lot of sense. What can we do as small business owners? I know we, I know you work with with larger companies as mm -hmm. well. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the people listening are solopreneurs, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I call them rebelpreneurs. Um, mm -hmm. uh, either working by themselves or with a very small team or, or with a, a virtual team. What can we do to to take advantage of this opportunity? What are some steps that people can take that are very simple, but would get them to a place of being able to embrace this and, and to be more conscious in their leadership? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say right off the bat, sit down and decide what are the most important questions that you want to ask of yourself. And one of those should be, who am I in this and who am I called to be through this for myself and for others, for my organization? And that any of these tools that we use that we direct towards ourselves, if we have small teams or we work with a group of contractors, we can also engage them in that process. It's really, when I mean, we do, like we think about, I go back 20 years when we used to always as teams have a book that we were studying together. Mm -hmm. And it's the same kind of thing. Do we have a pattern of learning together? And, um, and along with that, if we have a team, then thinking about what is our cadence of communication and actually scheduling that. So maybe it's that I need to be on the horn having a, a strategic conversation or a motivational, inspiring, inquiry-based development conversation with my team once a week. And then once a week, we're having a fight the fires, what needs to be done, tactical operational meeting and keeping those two things separate so that you can, so that the strategic doesn't get lost in the tactical. Um, and personally for me, and I've taught lots of people, I have a rhythm that I use that's on an annual basis. But if you talk about it from a short term standpoint, really saying on a monthly basis, what is it that I want to be achieving? How do I want to move the ball forward in all of the domains of my life against all of my priorities and areas where I want to have impact? And then on a weekly basis, setting yourself up, what are the actions I'm going to do with that? And then daily, what's the one thing, right? Like what's that one big mover that I want to give energy and bring into fruition? Um, and I think if we remember that we need to be part of that equation, right? Like we can't have a business where our health and well-being is not part of the equation because we just become a sacrifice to our work. That one of the questions we're asking is how am I taking care of my well-being? How am I taking care of my mental, emotional, and physical self? And how am I evolving spiritually or whatever my priorities are as human? Mm -hmm. I love that. And what you were saying there um, with the, the monthly and the weekly and then the daily uh, focus. Uh, it really reminded me of um, David Allen, uh, mm -hmm. his his system, which I, I use and have customized to, to meet my needs, the uh, getting things done system. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, that really works. And so if you're listening to this, regardless of what size your organization, whether you are managing yourself or managing a small team, uh, whether it's an, an employee uh, situation or a virtual staff flung around the world, 
these strategies are very, very important and very critical to, to help you and your team get to where you need to be. But I really also like what you said, Laura, about uh, who am I and who am I called to be in mm-hmm. this moment today? Mm-hmm. And I think that's really where the true leaders will step up and step out. And and the ones that don't, uh, they will be revealed that they don't yes. have it. They don't have what it takes. So we can learn and we can grow in this uh, and not let it to uh, n- not let it devastate us and, and throw us to the wayside. Yes, yes. And and the reality is anytime things get stressful, Ralph, like they are now, the um the things that we do that don't help, right, our blind spots become bigger. They get exacerbated in the stress of what's happening. And so finding, I really believe that all of us should have a rhythm of asking people for feedback. And this is particularly important for entrepreneurs and solopreneurs who don't have teams around them. And there's not a performance management system per se, um, but that you have a vehicle through which you're asking for feedback to see your blind spots so that you know what to work on. And I know in my own life, I I was managing a team at one point and there was a disconnect and I could just feel it. And I'm like, what is happening? So I started really talking to my team and I realized, oh, I'm a big ideas person and I go when things are half-baked, right? Like that's just the way I roll. Mm -hmm. I spin ideas faster than I can do anything with them. And that is very stressful to people who don't function that way, who are more linear. And yet our skill sets are very complementary. So how do we, how do we come together versus allowing those blind spots to be dividers? Mm, I love that. You said something very important that I want to circle back around to, and, and that is asking for feedback. In, in my experience, most self-employed people, most solopreneurs, they don't have that feedback loop. Mm-hmm. They, they live in their own world. They are constantly listening to the thoughts in their own head. They don't have the feedback. And that's where I think more than anything else, when things are tough, that's exactly when you need a coach. You need someone outside of yourself to give you the feedback. Now, it's great asking for feedback from anyone. You can ask feedback from mm-hmm. uh, coworkers and and uh, and vendors and customers mm-hmm. and clients. Uh, but having a, a coach who is experienced and who can give you uh, targeted feedback and encouragement, mm-hmm. and and also a little bit of direction, so that you're ju- you're just not uh, so completely lost in your own thoughts in your in your own world with no reference points. That is so incredibly important. And you have so many resources on your site uh, Mm. that offer uh, training and coaching. Tell us a little bit about how you work with people and how they can reach out to you to learn more. Sure. Well, what I most love to do is to work with teams on business strategy and then the implementation of conscious leadership principles in their organizations and culture. And so I love to go into companies and actually be part of that process with them. Um, And I also have other ways that people can work with me. I do a lot of online training. So I have a course right now actually called Ignite Your Impact, which accompanies my book that takes people on a six week journey. That's all digital online at home in your pajamas, if that makes you happy. (laughs) And there's some support from me through that process. Um, So there's some digital courses. My book is a great option for people. Um, And then I do some webinars as well. So some group based work that makes it a little bit more affordable for folks. But um, those would be the, the ways in which you can work with me. Um, I, but again, I, I really love working with companies to explore this idea of how do we create a different kind of strategy within our company and how do we be the best that we can be as individuals and as an organization so that we're creating good in the world. Mm, excellent. I love that. And what's the best way for people to reach out to you, Laura? Yeah, just pop over to my website, Laura at Laura Juarez. There's all sorts of ways to connect that are designed um, so that you can reach me with what's most interesting to you. And then if you just wanted to um, start to listen to the Conscious Leadership Podcast, you can pick it up on my website. Um, You can find it on Apple or Spotify or any of those outlets. 
Excellent. So so it's laurawarez.com, and we'll have that link posted on the Rebelpreneur website as well. Laura, this whole conversation has been uh, really uplifting and full of wisdom. Any final thoughts or, or words of wisdom that you'd like to leave us with? I, you know, I think what I always want people to remember is that this, the, these jobs that we have, these companies that we run, while they can feel overwhelming and stressful at times, they're such a privilege. And within privilege can be real joy. And when we can figure out how to come from that wellspring of joy in the process of growth, in the process of making difficult decisions, in the process of taking risks, it's just so much more fulfilling. And, and our contribution is so much higher that when we are functioning below the line, we can show up with as many hours as we want and as much money as we want, but we'll really never be more than kind of a, a sub-optimized mediocre. And <laughs> so how do we how do we get out of that, right? Like how do we get out of those habits so that we can really self-optimize in a way that feels graceful. And I really believe that joy and enthusiasm are at, are the cornerstones to that. Mm, very well said. Laura Juarez is a business consultant, strategist, experienced board chair, mother, and yogi. Her consulting company, Pure Potential, helps leaders and companies create impact-driven strategies and embody conscious leadership. You can find out more at laurawarez.com. Laura, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today on Rebelpreneur Radio. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's such a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Ralph. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.